Spotlight is a revealing look at the Catholic molestation scandal of 2002. Hey, Cypher here. This film had me floored. Whatever problems it has, it doesn't affect the narrative. And the narrative is really surprising. I remember the scandal from when I was a kid, but I had no idea how extensive it really was, and this movie reveals it quite well. It has a couple of misleading things about it, but it really is a good based on a true story movie. Until 2002, there had been a rising problem in the Catholic Church, with child molesters being priests. It had been reported on, but most of the time ignored by most people. There was a team of investigative journalists called Spotlight for the Boston Globe. Are you familiar with Spotlight? No, not particularly. Well, we are a uh, four-person investigative team. We report to Ben Bradley Jr., and we keep our work confidential. What are you working on now? We just put out a piece on a shoddy construction outfit, and right now we're really just uh, trolling around for our next story. How long does that typically take? Hard to say. Uh, a couple of months. A couple months? Yeah, we don't like to rush it. Once we settle on a project, we can spend a, a year or more investigating it. Spotlight did the research to show that it was a systematic problem. They uncovered a shocking amount of cases and exposed that the clergy had taken measures to cover up offenders through administrative action and backroom dealings. The revelation came as a shock to Boston, which is heavily Catholic, which also means the church wields a great deal of influence there. They knew and they let it happen to kids. Okay? It could have been you. It could have been me. It could have been any of us. We gotta nail these scumbags. We gotta show people that nobody could get away with this. Not a priest or a cardinal or a freaking pope! As a result, many other localities rooted out their own clergy's indiscretions, and the church is still reeling from the scandals. The Spotlight team received a Pulitzer Prize for public service in 2003 because of their coverage. The screenwriters really did their research on this one. When the actors were hired, many of whom are actually fairly similar looking, some of them met with their real-life counterparts to learn their mannerisms and personal stories. This film is concerned with accuracy through and through. Plus, Michael Keaton is back and in good form. The screenwriters developed the script from interviews and reading the published articles which there was numerous of. Of course, what they didn't have from all of that is fictionalized. In fact, much of the movie is actually fictionalized because of the lack of evidence. But nothing is extraordinarily out of place. We don't know each step of the process the Spotlight team took to expose the truth, nor is there any evidence as to the exact wording of any conversation in this. What we do know is the research the team did, just not exactly the chronology, along with what conversations and meetings took place, all of which this film follows closely. The fact is, the actual Spotlight team has verified this film and lauded it for its truth-telling. Anything that is incorrect is not factually incorrect, but can lead to some misinterpretations. You would think the church, with this portrayal of their most damning scandal of recent years, they would have hated this movie. But instead, they have publicly praised it. That is something to keep in mind throughout this, because we will be going over some other people's reactions. This movie seems to draw a lot of comparisons between it and All the King's Men, but that movie has a lot of problems. There's so little false with this movie that I think it better to just say what is true and surprised me the most. The Catholic Church actually wielded an insane amount of power in Boston and had actually attempted to suppress the scandal. The amount of molester priests was around 6% of the total priest population. Seriously. And people had been ignoring the issue despite numerous calls for action. 
it is important to note all of that, because it is really the Spotlight team that this whole thing became an international scandal for the Catholic Church. I love it when directors use juxtaposition to imply ideological conflict, and this movie has some great ones. It likes showing cathedrals overlooking conversations or playgrounds. <laughs> of course there is a church right there, and a playground. At one point, kids from a school bus come running past after a former priest admits that he was a molester. That's some good stuff. So if you haven't seen it already, just wait for the Silent Night montage and you'll get some goosebumps. Even though the story is oriented towards exposing the church, it is really a procedural drama glorifying old school reporting rooms. Because of the internet, newspapers can't afford to create these kinds of long-term investigative teams anymore. This is kind of the last hurrah of this kind of expose, and this film shows how and why, step by step. It also mentions the internet. Um, but from what I understand, readership is down. Internet is cutting into the classified business and... Uh... We can be forgiven in forgetting that in 2001, the internet did not have as much of a bearing on everyday matters as it does today. When they are speaking about downsizing, it is done as though it is because of the internet taking their readership. That wasn't really the case. Internet newspapers were slow to pick up in popularity. The Drudge Report was changing that, but not so much as to affect the Boston Globe. What the movie is alluding to is the merger between the Globe and the New York Times from 1993, and one of the original family owners ceasing management in 2000. It does give the wrong impression without those dates being said, though. The manager of the Globe was given the book on the Catholic Catechism by the Cardinal, like in the movie. It is taken as a snub, saying, look how little faith you have, because... Oh, but he did give me a copy of the Catechism. <laughs> yeah, well, the Cardinal's not known for his subtlety. But that was a misperception. The book was given because of the fact that the Cardinal was a part of the team of theologians who translated it, and he was proud of his own work. When I send somebody a link to my work on this channel, it's not to say, learn your history, damn it, but more to say, look at what I've done. Same goes for the Cardinal. This movie takes strides to avoid demonizing anyone, and remains ambiguous. That's actually pretty good history. For instance, even though it would be easy to say these molester priests are villains, they say... Mark my words, Mr. Resendez. If it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a village to abuse one. The movie culminates around this idea of the entire city of Boston being complicit in carrying on the lie. And this is some powerful stuff. Sometimes it's, it's easy to forget that we spend most of our time stumbling around in the dark. Suddenly a light gets turned on and there's a fair share of blame to go around. That being said, people have gone out of their way to criticize this movie and the Globe articles before it. They say the church was not trying to cover up stuff, but was instead told by psychologists that these abusive priests were recovered from their psychoses. For the most part, people consider this to be a specious argument, and tantamount to fiction, since there is plenty of contradictory evidence, but I had to mention it. The Catholic Church had one bit of criticism on the movie that I'll just play outright. The, the uh, implication is that nothing's been done, that we, we've done this terrible thing happened and the church has not responded. And of course, that's absolutely false. And the church has responded massively to this problem. It doesn't say for a second that we shouldn't bear you know, blame and responsibility, that we shouldn't take responsibility. But even to insinuate uh, that the church has, has done nothing is crazy. They have a point, but it is open for interpretation here. That's what makes this movie really good. It's a good movie, and I highly recommend it. It got the Academy Award for Best Picture for a reason. So, thanks for watching. Tell me what other based on a true story movies need busting in the comments below.
Don't forget to subscribe and check out some previous episodes. I'll see you next time.